You could do it. You know how many <laughs> people do that? All of them? Actually, I think none of them. Oh, none of them. Although isolators had a bad rap in the industry. Yep. For a good reason. Basically, nobody uses this in the industry is from really? what I can tell. None of our wholesalers stock this stuff. They stock the old stuff. I'll tell you what the problem with this is. Okay, if you're thinking about installing solar and you've got a metal roof, a tin roof of some kind, whether it be colour bond or trim deck or trap deck or clip block or whatever it might be, so many different types, we're going to talk to you about the rail system that we use that we think is a step ahead of everything else. Okay, Jason, before we get into all the little bits and pieces, let's talk about our, the rail system we use. Straight up, it's Radian. And I think that Radian is the best system we use. But we've got to start off here with a different bracket that you've not used. You've seen plenty of these before. Seen plenty of these, removed plenty of these. Yeah. What is that? What's the problem with that? Well, I believe that's just a uh, a very basic foot, tin foot. And I'm sure you probably could try and use it on every different type of tin sheet. But to me, it's square peg, round hole. Most colour bond roofs mm. are just standard standard wave. You've got a bit of a square peg, round hole. So you've got a curved roof. You've got a flat surface. How are you going to screw that down, not over tighten it, not do a flat spot? And Yeah, not ding your roof, basically. Like, it, not a little ding that rusts up over the years, yeah. right? Keeping that straight, I'm not sure how that's going to happen or get achieved. Yeah. But at least this one looks like it's got a, a rubber attached to the bottom. The ones I've removed, haven't had, they weren't attached. They were Most of them loose. don't. This is actually a cleaner foot and they do it oh, properly. Right. So I okay. probably should have shown you a, a standard, <laughs> you know, a <laughs> really bashy one. Yeah, what cleaner do you do? And they're, they're, not, they're a decent company. So they give us this, which is they call a puck, I think. So you can put those two together. It'd be a little bit of a pain to install if you're doing Clenergy, wouldn't it? I mean, I don't have three hands. I'm going to line that up and hold the screw in my drill. And you could do it. You know how many people do that? All of them, actually. I think none of them. Oh, none of them. <laughs> so I've talked to um my supplier that supplies this. We don't yep. buy it often, and he reckons he just never sells them. So it'd be interesting to find out off Clenergy, actually. But just because you can do something, not everyone does yep. do it. So they have got a solution there. We do. Let's tell us about. This fella, it's a little bit obvious when you look at it straight away. Yeah, so this is Radiant. I guess this comes pre-assembled for us out of the box. It's got the rubber already stuck on, which is great, but it's got the curve or the profile of the roof mm. tin sheet. So I guess, you know, we are all trained in-house, but we are also human. If we do over tighten it, you've still got that curve. Keeps the profile, keeps the shape. You're not going to dent the roof. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Like um, Clenergy have, we've got this rubber already fixed to the bottom, Yep, which is just should happen with a high quality bracket so you can't Absolutely. miss it on a Friday afternoon, yeah. drop it in the gutter or something like yep. that. So let's quickly move on. This one here is a trim deck, I think. Trim deck, yep. yep. So basically you just got a slightly flatter profile on the top there, as you can see with those two. Mm. So it's just a different shape, very slightly, same sort of process. Yeah, and here we've got clip block uh, lysite. So here's clip block lysite. So again, just a different profile. So this is when you don't have your screw lines. We're not removing an existing screw. We're just finding a section and clipping it on, and it's clamping to the roof sheet profile. A different kind of clip block, clip block 700, right? right? We've got just all sorts of different brackets. All different days. It's, it's just, yeah, more curved. This is more of a rigid edge. Again, just a different profile, tin sheet. Now... Let's talk about a challenge that we might have with this corrugated or trim deck roof is that what we generally do is take a screw out yep. and put another one back in. Correct. And by the way, let's get into screws first. Okay, so what we do there is we take out a little standing mill screw and light gauge screw, and then we replace it with a much heavier gauge screw and a longer screw just so we get the bite in that timber, right? Correct. So we're going back into the timber that we hit did. We use this Berwick B8 screw for most of our roofs, which just comes with this really heavy duty rubber washer. It's coated to resist weather. Yep. I reckon you would have taken plenty of systems off where you've seen rusty screws. On Lots them. of rusty screws when we remove them. And yeah. the washers are never that big, if a washer at all. Like you said, it's something like that with a little rubber washer. So the washer is probably half the problem because of bimetal corrosion. Correct. The other half the problem is they're just using some cheap Chinese screw. Not yep. saying the Ch Chinese probably made this too, but you know what I mean. Just well, a cheap non gutter screw. Yeah. So uh, just a heavier quality screw. If we're right on the right on the beach, yep. stainless. Uh, yeah, and uh, funnily enough, we don't. We have to take that washer off. I can't find stainless with that <laughs> really good Berwick washer. So screws are a really essential, important Absolutely. part of it. And if washers work, it's worth removing them and putting a bigger washer on, right? So oh yeah, yeah. And when you think about it, these screws are holding the power station onto your roof for the next. You know, 30, 30 years or whatever yeah. it's going to be, you know. Yeah. You don't want to cut corners and just save a few cents on screws or whatever or washers. So fairly important part of the system. Now, let's say we wanted to install a solar system, but you don't have enough timber beneath it, your screw lines. Yep, you know, no buttons. Yeah. So let's move on to our direct-to-sheet. Direct-to-sheet. 
Okay, so this is your standard wave director sheet. You'd have your curve and then you'd be your valley, which is this middle ridge here, and then back to your curve. And there's no timber underneath at no that point. No timber underneath. Yeah. So we've got the six screw holes, which would we'll use all the screws for the holes because we're just relying on the tin sheet holding that foot. Mm. No so, timber batten underneath. So really expensive little screw this, um, but <laughs> they're a really fine gauge screw. Yeah. You're nothing you pick up the hardware. They come with this foot, a specially designed thin gauge screw to hold, hold into the metal. Hold the sheet, yep. And we can do that with, this is our corrugated. Correct. Just, or standard, um. Standard wave, tinder sheet. Standard wave, a color bond is what I was looking for. There's your trim deck one. There's your trap deck one, where we don't have to find a screw line so that we can fix securely and make sure that power station doesn't fly off your roof and how long. Absolutely. So such a good product. Always coming up with these little changes. And this director sheet fitting itself has been upgraded recently. They've also got this um little inside joiner that they're oh, yeah. coming. You didn't use this. No, I didn't use that one, no. This just came fresh in the mail and we're going to be, start using it now, which is just going to save uh, a lot less rail waste, yep. which is really good. But uh, yeah, really, really good product. But let's move on from Radiant and just talk about some of the other bits and pieces. Yeah, well, I guess while we're just talking about screws, because they are just a bit of a rabbit hole, I'll give you a handful here for you, Mark. You, yes. You got some screws there and then we got our earth cabling here. What's so, the, the difference with these? Yeah. Oh, so sorry, saddles. Screws, screws. There's, um, it's a bit of a bandwagon for me. It surprises me that you go to an electrical wholesaler, you can buy these gold-looking screws yep. or br- b- brass-looking screws or whatever you call them. They're zinc. They're great for indoors, right, mm-hmm. in the ceiling space or something like that. Yep. But as soon as you put that out in the weather, leave it there for a few years, that's just going to start rusting up really quickly, yeah, right. especially if you mix it with different kinds of metal, like yep. biometal corrosion stuff we're talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. So the majority of the screws that we use is just a gal screw. Not that much more expensive. I mean, it is when you buy them in thousands, but but we have to go to a fastener shop to get this, not the electrical wholesaler, because it's really important that we, and we're putting stuff out in the weather, just running conduit up your wall or whatever wall. it is, yep. that it's not breaking down. So yeah, speaking of running conduit up the wall, this is a zinc saddle, similar to the idea of this gold screw, just a fairly cheap saddle, completely fine indoors. But as soon as you start running conduit up outside or any saddles on the roof, should you need to, you need to start going to a gale saddle, right? Yep. So we use 50-50. We use some of these indoors, some of these outdoors. You know, these are fine in the roof space. Yep. Sometimes then you need to go to a double saddle, right? Yep. Because if you just want to get that grip, I'm sure you've had plenty of times when you just can't yeah, get that. All the cables just get that tension. You just need to really secure that cable back to the wall. Yeah, yeah. And instead of, I mean, you can do a dodgy sort of double saddle like that, but we're tradesmen. We don't do crap like that. <laughs> so, you know, just getting the right saddle and the right material for the right place is really important. Talking about that, so we've touched a little bit on bimetal corrosion, just mm-hmm. the idea if we have two different metals, there's a sort of chemical right. reaction yeah. that causes corrosion. If we've got our rail on the roof and we wanted to screw something, which we'll get to in a second, screw something to that, then what are we going to use, our sink screw or our gal screw? Let's see if you can uh, pass stainless. your first year apprenticeship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so zinc is obviously no good. Gal's no good because you're going to get bimetal corrosion. Yeah. So we have to go to a stainless screw to fasten that to the rail. You've got these little lugs out there and we fasten it. So really important to have the right screws in your screw tray for the right job, right? And the right application and knowing where to use that as well. Yeah, That's why we yeah. like to train our guys. Yeah, exactly, yeah. What's that isolator? I thought we'd got off isolators. Well, we have. We're, the code has changed, so we're, we can do it without, but if we so, can't run our cables the right way. So in short, this is a big switch you put on your roof so you can turn correct. off the power that comes down to yeah. the inverter. Yes, yeah. So basically, if your panel's on the roof in the sun going to your inverter, we'll have a DC isolator on your inverter, but those cables will still have ca- current running through them or mm. power running through them. Yeah, and so the standard for a long time was to install these. Mm-hmm. And people in the industry had a lot of issues with them. We've actually had a couple of issues ourselves. Yeah. Now, the good news is the last update of uh, Australian standards, a good three years ago or something now, said that in 95% of the cases, we don't need to use these. Yes. And in short... If you have to run your cable straight through the ceiling, and let's say a fiery wanted to smash through your ceiling because your house is on fire, that stage your house is on fire anyway, yeah? <laughs> then I don't want to be hitting that DC cable. So if you can run it around the edges, yep. which we almost always can, we don't need to put that on the roof. Correct. Great news. Great news. Great news for the industry. But what about the 5%, mate? <laughs> what happens there? Like, have we solved the problem? We have. We have. So originally, I guess we were just mounting these direct to rail. So out in the weather. They are fully weatherproof and sealed, but obviously you've all still got humidity in the air sucking in as well. Mm. Do you want to touch on that a bit more? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so we have our conduit entering in there, you know. Yep. 
and we have a multi-hole gland over there, which you can see. So we, we do have all these different methods of making sure that water can't get in there. Mm -hmm. The problem is we can't make it airtight, right? right? And what happens on a humid day is the air has got water in it. Yep. So water can get in there. And then with the air, humid air can get in there. It causes corrosion on the isolator and then it can't get back out. Mm -hmm. But what we found many years ago is that it's a pretty simple fix is we put a breather valve. Put a breather on there onto the isolator so that moisture can get back out again, right? Mm -hmm. And so we don't no longer have such a problem. Yeah, again, what you've got there, we used to, you'll see these on the roof a lot and people just don't put them in shields at all. Yeah. doesn't happen so much more, but we use this. We use the Clenergy isolator, actually, the, another brand of rail. They make a really good isolator cover and we can pop it up there to service it up on your roof. Although isolators had a bad rap in the industry. Yep. For a good reason. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you do a shoddy job installing them. We've solved, we've solved the problem. You know, I'd have no problem having an isolator on my roof, especially with all the modifications that we've made. We'll get to get to another point with that. Well, let's talk about our cable run, eh? Yeah, so I guess our cable run comes down from the roof. So you've got your solar panels. This is our deck tight that comes out of the tin sheet and that'll go along the rail and go to your solar panels. So plug your solar panel to there and then now we'll come down to the inverter so do you want to tell us about this little T piece we got here, Mark? Yeah. So uh, again, the problem that we've got, even though we have what we call a multi-hole gland and basically water, that's waterproof, right? Yep. Completely waterproof. No water can get in there. It's not airproof. <laughs> it's not. So and the so, same issue with the ISO then, right? Yeah. And when you get different air pressures, um, as the air pressure changes outside and heat and all that kind of thing, you're going to have a lower air pressure in there. Air from outside is going to want to go in. Mm -hmm. Humid air. You've got a lot of conduit because the conduit runs the whole way through your roof. Anyway, way, yeah. right? And so that can then just condense in there, either get into your isolator or probably start dripping down into your inverter. So this is where Australian standards are really good in some ideas like this. What what they've done is put this um this drain valve here. So we make this the lowest part of our conduit run. Mm -hmm. Let's say your inverter is over there and then you bring that up. We actually put that in, in conduit to go into the inverter. Yep. And then all your water will come down there and drip out of your drain, one-way drain valve. So we no longer have these issues of water getting into inverters yeah. or water getting into isolators. Right. Rooftop isolators, bad in the past. We hardly have to use them. Mm -hmm. But now that we do, if you keep the rules, yeah. it's going to work a whole lot better, right? If you do a good install, yes. Mm. Don't miss any parts, that's for sure. Mm. But deck tights are a bit of an interesting one too, is um, that we use their uh, 75 mil deck tight, right? Yeah. Pretty hard to get that one, actually. And as as in you can't just pick it up from the hardware, yep. we find that a little bit hard to get. You can get 100 mil ones really easily. Mm -hmm. But the issue is it goes into the valley, yep. stops the water flow down your roof. Yep. You know, understanding water flow is really important. Absolutely. So. A bit of resistance in that valley. You just want the water just to get in there and flow away. Mm -hmm. And yep. the way we install it is that way, right? Not the, yes, not the other right. way. So. Yeah. so, yeah, there's a lot of little tricks of the trade that you learn over. The water's going out and around. And there is a big difference, I guess. I guess the point is is really understanding the standards and taking the time to read it, yeah. but also having 15, 16, we might be getting closer to 17 years or something like yeah. that of yeah. doing this. We kind of You kind of learn a lot of things along the way that, you know, the subcontractors and the juniors in the industry just aren't Just doing. aren't picking up, yeah, for sure. Okay, let's talk about back up on your roof. Yep. So we we're saying how we've got this cable running all the way mm -hmm. from each panel, yep. you know, and connecting all together. Let's talk about cable management. Okay, sounds good. Uh, zip ties. Yeah. So I guess there's two different bags of zip ties we've got here. We've got nylon and stainless. So your nylon is your standard zip tie. I'm sure everyone in the garage has one. Someone's dad's got one. They are UV rated, but obviously being on a roof in the weather, heat cool, heat cool, they do get brittle over time and get mm. very rigid. You look at yeah, them. Even that reflected way. UV, yeah. actually. So even though it's not directly in the sun, yep. it gets a reflected UV. Absolutely. So and it doesn't take much to break these after about six to eight months, to be mm. honest. So they're very, very good. In the short term, but not a long-term solution. Mm. We use them just to tie our cables into place on the rail. So, for example, we'll run our rail along temporarily. Run our rail along, yep. temporarily yep. And then we'll just tack, tack them in place. But before we finish the job and before we panel, we'll use a stainless zip tie. So we'll come around and cable manage our cables to the rail. Stainless zip tie keeps it there for the longevity. We've got a special crimping tool as well. So we get the right tension on them. Holds all our cables up off the roof. Really stops leaves blowing under panels, possums making nests. Cables sagging and hitting the roof. And as we're doing that, we have to make sure that any of these nylon cable ties, in fact, I know some of the tradies go along and snip all these off, right? Yeah. To prove the apprentices, just <laughs> to make sure that that cable's going to hang up there without this on the Without that on there. That's yeah. not lasting. Now, speaking of cable management on the roof, cable management is such an important part of solar. Yes. 
like especially on a tin roof think about that we've got this dc cable all over your roof we need to keep that up and keep it tied up to your rail right and if it starts dropping down you've got really well insulated cable that's fire rated that's all fine but it's sitting on a hot roof where possums and leaves and everything like that yep, are going debris is going to catch it it just doesn't sound like a good idea so tell us about this stuff we've got stainless steel wire so stainless steel wire is basically our continuary wire so we'll run it from our bottom rail to our top rail or if we have multiple rolls we run the whole way that's our cable management line so that's the main artery where all our cables will run up mm. the top panels and then back down the bottom you know you you probably wouldn't know this but i've talked to a lot of guys in the industry about this and then even inspectors mm-hmm. uh, victorian inspectors about this and basically nobody uses this in the industry is from really tell yeah that's crazy which what they're saying is well why doesn't the c- c- cable just support itself the first reason it doesn't support itself is because you can't, by Australian standards, support cable by itself, by right? itself, yeah. And let's say you're running through the attic space, the ceiling space. Yep. That's going to be fine, right? It's not to Australian standards, but because cable isn't allowed to support itself. It has to have something else has to support to have, it. Yeah. Because that's copper, right? Correct. And what's going to happen? Heats up, cools down, starts sagging, possum yep. gets onto it. It's just going to touch your roof. And contract over time. So it kind of surprises me that I think so many people in the industry, let me know down in the comments if um, I'm full of it about this um, stainless wire. If you use it, if you think everyone else in the industry uses it, but from what I understand, it's not used. Not used. No. Okay. Mm. Interesting one. Mm. All right. Well, still on cables and cable management. You've got a couple of different earths here, Mark. Do you want to tell us the difference on those? Yeah. Okay, cool. This is just your standing, we call it building wire. So it's seven strands of copper. This is four mil cable and just insulation. So standard building wire. And this is earth because it's green. Again, I think this is almost everyone in the industry. Tell me if you're an installer and I'm full of it. From what I understand, not many people are using this. And the reason I know that is because when we go to the wholesaler to get our correct cable, we can't get it. Mm-hmm. They order it in specially for us. So none of our wholesalers stock this stuff. They stock the old stuff. I'll tell you what the problem with this is first is that most of the time, or most of the time when I've looked into it, we don't have a UV rating on that sheath. Okay. So even though you're underneath the cable, like we found out from cable ties, yep. you get reflective UV up there. We don't see heaps of problems, but give it 15 years yeah. and we're going to start see that starting to break, break down. down here, right? Earthing is a massively important part of a oh, solar system. crucial, right? Absolutely. And so what we're doing is earthing, you know, bonding this rail to your earth. You know what? <laughs> I'm sure you've seen this before, ripping off systems. We often rip off those, um, <laughs> you know, Euro solar systems or, or whatever you want to call it. Screw holder. Yeah, <laughs> so you whack a zinc screw in it, twist it around, and yeah, screw it in there, and that will last, I reckon, around about one week, you know, yeah. but maybe two weeks, you know. <laughs> no, no, but, you know. <laughs> so big problem there, we've got exposed copper, we've got a zinc screw, so not only just the insulation, but we have a multi-strand tin copper, so the tin on the copper mm-hmm. will uh, stop it corroding, yep. and then we put it into a, what sort of lug? An air slug. Like just a, yeah, yeah. yeah stainless slug. And we've got the spray over there. Bit of a spray on that. Final seal. Yeah, Australian standards. I mean, a lot of people put a bit of spray on that, hoping it's going to work. You know, it doesn't really yeah, that, that's past right. help. That much. So stepping it up and using the right cable, the right tool for the right yeah. job, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess what we're trying to cover here, basically, is that there is a difference between... It's it's easy to talk about panels and inverters. Oh, right? yeah, easy. Well, that's all everyone talks about. Yeah. Well, it talks about the installation process. Well, me too. That's what most, most of my reviews are. Because <laughs> this is a little bit more nuanced and a little bit difficult to explain to people the difference between a company that's been in, in business for 15 years, Yeah. you know, three sparkies in the office and, uh, you know, a bloke like me, Ryan and Shane, that are anally retentive about... We yeah, have things like this. Yeah, that's know. it. Asking, I'm making sure you're training apprentices. Your apprentices are coming through and turning into tradies. You know, that kind of um, the training and, and that regime all the way through is such a different end product yes. than just using your subcontractor, right? Absolutely. Or or your contractor that's just got, got out of his apprenticeship and got his tight yeah. ticket. So so hopefully, you reckon we've pointed out? Well, it, it, point? it does. No, but yeah, drive home the point, but it's also the team on your roof. It's the guys that are installing it, how they've been trained, how long they've been trained. And the right tool for the right application. It's big. Mm, exactly. Yeah. If you want to find out about our team, by the way, we'll put a link down below on our website. We've got our, all our team. Jason's on there. I'm the, on there. But our apprentices are on there. You can see how long each of us stay around. Yeah. You know, we're a fair, fairly solid team. We don't have a high turnover. No. We really focus on the training. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, thanks for coming in, Jason. Too easy. Thanks for having me, Mark. All right. Yeah.